when organising the transport of humanitarian items, or indeed any goods by air, there is often a long chain of companies between the logisticians sending the goods and the owner of the aircraft being used to transport them. Most of the time, the owner of the plane will never be revealed in documentation seen by the logistician, and sometimes even the name of the company operating the aircraft will not be known by the client. Let's look at the reason for this. Here is our logistician. She could be working for an NGO or other humanitarian organisation, for a national government's aid department, or for a peacekeeping organisation. Let's say that she's working for a medium-sized NGO, who wants to send emergency shelter non-food items, NFIs, within 24 hours to a country in Africa. One option is to get the supplier of the NFIs to be responsible for the transportation of the items. In this case, depending on the deal with the supplier, the supplier is not necessarily obliged to inform the NGO which company it contracted to deliver the goods. In any case, it is most likely that the supplier themselves would use a broker. More on that in a moment. Another option is to use a freight forwarder. Often these are large international companies who have their own fleets of aircraft. However, in some cases, they themselves may lease planes from other air cargo operators. We can come on to air cargo operators in a moment. So let's get back to the broker. A broker works for a company that can organise air cargo services on a client's behalf. As brokers are specialists in aircraft chartering with an expert knowledge of the aviation industry, many NGOs rely on a broker to arrange cargo flights for them, particularly in emergencies. The broker uses its contacts to offer the NGO a short list of companies available to transport the NFIs. Once a decision is taken, the broker arranges a contract with an air cargo operator. An air cargo operator is the company responsible for flying the plane. They will have an air operating certificate issued by a civil aviation authority, which permits them to operate the aircraft. They should also have all the other documentation relevant to the aircraft, such as the insurance certificate. However, that operator may not be the usual operator or owner of the aircraft. The operator may have leased the plane from another company. If this is a wet lease, then the second operator has provided not only the aircraft, but the crew as well, on a long or short-term lease. And that operator will have most of the documentation, such as the insurance certificate. To complicate matters further, the second operator may not actually own the aircraft itself. The aircraft may be owned by another company. The main figure behind a whole network of companies, which may even include both the operators. If the plane has been involved in arms trafficking or destabilising commodity flows, then the owner of that plane will try to obscure their activities through the use of front companies and bank accounts registered in countries with weak financial regulations.